Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so yes, I'm Akram, working uh, at Ledger as a developer support engineer. Um, so today, uh, I will show you, it will be a two-part uh, presentation. Uh, first one, um, a quick overview of the different open source integrations uh, we have at Ledger. Uh, and the second one, the second part, it will be a presentation slash a workshop uh, to show you quickly how to, uh, to build a quick web app interacting with a Ledger hardware device. So uh, let's quickly uh, dive into the different integrations pathways we have uh, uh, with Ledger. Um, many people don't necessarily know, but uh, most of the integrations at Ledger are most of them uh, open source. Uh, they're doable by, by us internally, but, but also by uh, external partners. Um, we have many, uh, let's say, four layers of integrations. Uh, the first one is the embedded app integration. If you're uh, uh, familiar with Ledger hardware device, the first step to use it is to have your uh, embedded app uh, regarding a specific blockchain uh, installed on it and before uh, developed on it. So the embedded app are the first uh, layer. They are built uh, on top of the uh, basic firmware layer. Uh, this, the, this is the first step that will allow you to interact with the protocol. This is something we did it uh, by, uh, by, it was done by us at the beginning, uh, and, uh, a few years ago, but we tried to uh, let it uh, be done by external partners. Uh, our repo is open, so you can have a look uh, at it, uh, check how the, the embedded app are done, uh, clone the repo so if you want. Uh, and also you can do your own uh, embedded app uh, by yourself. You can uh, do what we call a side loading on your uh, hardware device. So it would be your risk to do it, but uh, you can do your own custom app and uh, uh, from a clone of a previous app and custom it and, uh, and uh, side load it on the, on the device. So this is the first layer of uh, integration. Uh, the second layer that comes right after the embedded app integration is the blockchain support or blockchain integration. So you have the, this first layer that allows you to have your embedded app on your device. So this is the first step. The second step, if you're familiar with the Ledger hardware device, we also have a kind of software wallet, uh, our companion app. So to allow users uh, to use your blockchain directly, for example, uh, on the software wallets, you have to uh, do this uh, blockchain integration to allow them to manage, uh, use their coin directly on, on the companion app. And same thing, uh, it's open. It's open source. You can clone uh, the previous blockchain integration from, uh, from the repo, uh, custom it, do it uh, yourself or with the team because uh, it's uh, lots of work, and then submit it uh, if done. So these are the first two big layers of uh, integrations. There is another uh, integration that comes on the, let's say on the side, it's the live app integration. Um, so what is a live app? It's kind of uh, application, could be a DAP or, uh, or a non-DAP, uh, that you embed directly uh, through the software wallet. It will allow users to be able to use directly your, uh, your DAP uh, or non-DAP uh, on the companion app, but you will need uh, something else on top of it, a type of plugin, we call it. Uh, because we promote at Ledger what we call uh, clear signing, uh, to know what you're signing uh, directly on your device, not to do uh, by signing. And the plugin is kind of an embedded app also, but a little more custom. And same thing, we have uh, our repo, which is open with the list of plugins, uh, and you can clone it, work on it, and also do your custom way. So. This is the third uh, layer. And the last one, and the easiest one, and the one that we will, I will base uh, my, uh, my uh, next uh, part of the presentation, uh, it's the, what we call the connect your app uh, integration. This, is, is the, this integration is uh, the fastest one. It's the, just a bunch of library you have to, uh, to import uh, and to, in, to, to put it inside your DAP. It will allow your DAP to be able to interact with, uh, directly with the hardware device to be able, uh, depending on, on the connectivity you will choose, you will have, you will have different uh, type of libraries, and you will be able to allow your DAP to be able to talk, let's say like that, uh, with the, uh, the, hardware, the, the Ledger hardware device. 
So, this will be a quick uh, kind of uh, presentation slash workshop. Uh, we won't have time to do it as a workshop, but I will give you all the links if you want uh, to, to try it. Uh, for the prerequisites, so we, we need, so as I said, uh, this workshop is based on the connector app integration, the easiest one. So for that, you will need uh, to ensure that you have the right uh, package manager, your ledger hardware device if you have one, hope so, uh, with the Ethereum app uh, installed, generate an Ethereum address, and use the right libraries I will show you just after. So to get started, so as I said, uh, ensure that you have uh, everything set. Uh, with the Ethereum app, your device, and everything installed. Uh, for this, we will be using the EIP191 on signing messages. This is the, the one that will be used to, to sign uh, messages on, on this work, workshop. Let's go it that way. You have the link to the repo if you want to have a look at it. So it's a my ledger slash example ledger slash sign personal message. If you want to take a picture or as you want. And once you clone uh, this repo, you just have to launch these two uh, commands, uh, npm install and npm run start, and this is what you should have. So as I said, quick web app, we don't do too complicated. Uh, this is what the, uh, how the web app look like, uh, and you can see that you have a hash my message button that will be explained just after. Um, so. The depending on what you want to do on the hardware device, you have first to think about the behavior. So the behavior I choose for this, uh, uh, this uh, let's say, workshop is to open my, uh, so my hardware device, open my Ethereum app, click on the hash my message on the web app. It you will receive on your hardware device a message test uh, to sign. And you will be able also to sign it or cancel it on your hardware device. So after signing the message, um, the web app will display two things, uh, the hash of your message and your Ethereum address displayed just below. And if you want to ensure that it's your Ethereum address uh, that signed this message, you can go on runkit.com, enter these, these two lines, just replace the hash displayed uh, comments by what you got on, your, on the web app, and normally it should retrieve your Ethereum address. So how does it work? Uh, so as I said, it's the connect your app integration. So depending on what you want to use on the connectivity part of the device, you will choose the right transport library. So on my side, as I'm using the Ethereum app and there is uh, the transport web at HID um, library uh, for the connectivity. I choose this one. You also have the web USB. You also have the, the web Bluetooth. So depending on, on what you want to do, you will choose the right transport library. So ensure that you're using the, the, using the right one. And on the repo, you will find a, a kind of doc with a list of functions. And as I said, it depends on the behavior you want to get with your hardware device. So based on the, the behavior I wanted to get, this, these are the different functions I choose to interact with my device. Uh, the fourth line, I don't know why it's looking like that, but is the function that uh, allow you to uh, hash the message. So normally it's uh, sign hash, something like that. I uh, don't remember, but uh, this is this one. And yeah, so. And as I said, depending also on the behavior you want to, to do, you will have different uh, uh, calls between the hardware device, your web, your web app. You might, be, uh, you might encounter uh, errors and every, at every step. So depending on the error, you also have a list of, of error that will be displayed and explained. And depending on that, you can, uh, uh, you can manage to, to do your integration. And uh, that's it. Uh, quickly, before ending this, um, as I said, our repo is open. So we welcome everyone to contribute uh, to it. Um, we have a double challenge. Uh, the first one to, uh, 
to enhance enhance our open platform, but also to uh, to listen to external developers. So we have to find the right balance between between these two uh, these two uh, groups. Let's say like that. Uh, so, but we prioritize customer satisfaction. So at the end, we will have the final say on that. Uh, and if you want to become a, a partner, uh, reach out so to us. Don't don't hesitate. And a few links to from what. Uh, on, uh, on what you can uh, you can have a look. Uh, the first one, the developer portal. Uh, everything I said is uh, written also on it, so you can have a look at it. So it's um, at developers.ledger.com. We also have a Discord server where you can ask your questions, and if there is a, a Ledger uh, developers free, he will answer your questions. Um, we have a kind of uh, blog also. Uh, explaining uh, different journeys. And the last one, our repository, the Ledger HQ repo, uh, which is open, so you have all inside, uh, embedded apps, blockchain integrations, uh, live apps, documentation, everything. And that's it. Thank you very much. There's time for questions. Are there any? Can you run over there? Thank you. Uh, so when every mm, chain, yeah, like every, every coin can create their own uh, app on Ledger, uh, doesn't it create some protocol uh, or format compatibility issues? Like, do you have universal format how different chain build transactions? And my next question also related is if this, uh, mm, this, this JavaScript libraries are also covering uh, um, some apps written by like, external entities, like different protocols than um, than what Ledger maintains. Okay, so for the first one, yes, the, we might encounter uh, protocol compatibility issues sometimes. So we have a, let's say, strategy. We uh, favoritize uh, what we call EVM-like chains first. Uh, for the rest, when it's too complicated, it depends on the, let's say, return on investment. It fits. If it's a chain, for example, on the top 100 on, or on the top 50, if, if it's complicated but that we can figure out a solution, uh, we can do it. But it's, uh, it's, um, it's together, so it will be done externally, but uh, we have kind of uh, regular calls to explain how to do it, and external partners follow the, the, the road we explain to, to them. So depending on the, uh, the complexity, yes, we prioritize, and then we see at the end for the... Mo the more complex one at the end. And for your second question, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So and the, the, there are this em embedded apps, right? You call this embedded yeah. apps? Yeah, so if embedded apps are created by an external entity, then do you, do you have like matching set of this JavaScript or TypeScript libraries actually, or uh, Ledger needs to build it. How does this work? Uh, could you repeat the question? Like, uh, so there is embedded app, and then you have uh, this uh, JavaScript or TypeScript code to interact with Ledger. Okay, so the, these are two things. So the first mm -hmm. one, the embedded app, and then the but JavaScript they, side. They need to be compatible with each other, right? So the, so the JavaScript side is when you're, you're, for example, you have your, your DAP, your application that want to be able to directly interact with the, the device. And uh, on the device, it will depend, of course, of your chain. If your chain is on, uh, it's EVM compatible, for example, it will be easier. For example, it will it could uh, be able assume to. Assume it's not. What? Assume that it's not, yeah. <laughs> Assume that it's not. It will depend on if the embedded app is already uh, integrated. So if not, there is a need to integrate the embedded app first and then do the, the, the rest. Okay. And then like, both parts are maintained yeah. by the same entity? Or? Uh, the embedded app are maintained by the one who did it. So either it's the foundation, either it's we external partners we have, and the libraries, yes, it's by us. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Uh, thank you. Um, so, non-technical question. Uh, we looked into uh, like using Ledger. Um, I mean, the whole point of using a, a cold wallet, I suppose, is that you don't want it online, that you want to have that extra layer of security. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's not as practical as being online and connected. Mm -hmm. So, this connection layer that you explained there, to what extent does that open up risks and, and how could that be mitigated? Because you are connecting then online and, and mm -hmm. I mean, God knows where the connection potentially comes from um, if you're not a coder. So how, wh what's your recommendation for actually doing that connection but being on the definitely safe side of having the advantage why you chose Ledger? Okay, so even if you're exposed online when using it, um, you have uh, another layer of security. We have a kind of, uh, so when you're using your device, you, you have inside it uh, secure elements. Uh, so everything that is displayed on your screen is the truth. So if you want to be sure that you're not exposed, you have to verify what you have on your screen and also what you have on your device. So if you, what you have on your screen and what you have on your device are, are different, you're potentially exposed to something. So, so that was the check you showed of the, the yeah. Address, for yeah, for example. And you also have another thing is uh, we, we, want, we promote clear signing. So uh, pe many people, when they sign something on, on dApps or, or other application, um, they often sign type of hash so it's a line of uh, letters and numbers you don't understand. So they sign it because they know that they asked for it, but they don't understand what they said. So what we want to promote is clear signing. It kind of translates this hash into understandable uh, sentences that will be showed on your device. So then when you sign on your device, you're understanding it that you're sending, for example, uh, east to this address, and you know what you're doing. So these are two. Uh, main element to take into account when uh, doing this to be sure that you're not exposed on, on, online. Yeah. Yeah. Send, receive, uh, staking, NFTs. Uh, when you send an NFT or so, yeah. It's pretty small, but we we are launching. Uh, I have it on me, so I can uh, showcase it. Uh, we are launching a new uh, new device with a with a bigger screen. Uh, we promoted it uh, a year and a half ago, but uh, uh, we uh, we are a little late. So you have a bigger screen with that, and you will be able to display more uh, more characters, more information, and you will have a better user experience also uh, for a no, for non crypto user, for example. Amazing. Thank you so much, Akram. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone.